five, four, three, two, one, ignition, and lift off of Falcon 9. Go Utah Fat, go Falcon. Vehicle is making that range. At T plus 30 seconds and counting, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Launch Complex 39A, carrying the Eutelsat 36D payload to orbit. Now, during the rocket's ascent, we will be tilting the engines, the technical term for that being gimbling, and that'll turn the rocket horizontally in what we call a gravity turn. The vehicle will still be going up, but now we'll also be headed horizontally away from the launch pad. We've also throttled down the engines in preparation, is supersonic. in preparation for max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure. And this is when the vehicle experiences the greatest amount of aerodynamic stress as it ascends through the Earth's atmosphere. Max Q. And there's that call out for max Q. Now, the rocket typically needs to go 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. So keep an eye on the Stage 1 telemetry, which is located at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Coming up in just under a minute from now, we're going to have three events in, back, quick, in quick succession, starting with MECO, or main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation, and then second engine start one. MECO is where we shut down all nine Merlin 1D engines on the first stage. This then gets followed by stage separation, which is when the first and second stages of Falcon separate from one another. And that'll be followed by second engine start one, or SES one, where we light the MBAC engine on the second stage. So keep an eye out for all of these events, which are going to happen in rapid succession in about 25 seconds from now. Stage separation confirmed. Stage separation. And there you heard and probably saw each of those three events, Miko, followed by stage separation, and then SES-1. Coming up in about 30 seconds from now, we'll have fairing separation. The fairings are currently attached above the second stage, and they will be jettisoned away and will fall back to Earth. Fairing separation confirmed. And there's that confirmation of fairing separation from the second stage. As a reminder, we'll be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves today once they fall back to Earth with our recovery vessel, Bob. It's T plus three minutes and 55 seconds into today's mission. The next major event coming up will be at the T plus six five minute mark, which you'll see, you should be able to see on the left hand side of your screen. And this will be the first stage entry burn. Now to start that entry burn, we will be relighting three of the Merlin M1D engines, starting with the center engine known as E9, followed shortly after by engines E1 and E5, which is similar to pumping the brakes to slow down the vehicle as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We need to slow the booster down to reduce re-entry forces, which then helps us recover and reuse the first stage. 
Now, during that, re that entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but we're also still moving really fast, and this causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also known as the rocket's plume. And this deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle's surface. Now, that surface comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight, the soot builds up a little more on the outside of the vehicle. And oftentimes, prior to launch, you can actually see that soot on the first stage. Nominal trajectory. Good call out there of nominal trajectory. As a reminder, on the left-hand side of your screen is the Falcon 9 first stage, and on the right is the second stage, which is currently carrying the Eutelsat 36D payload to orbit. In just under, under a minute from now, we should hear confirmation of entry burn startup on the Falcon 9 first stage. And currently on your screen right now are some beautiful views of our second stage as it carries the Eutelsat 36D payload to orbit. As a reminder, today's booster is flying for its 12th time today, having previously flown six Starlink missions, four separate customer satellite missions, and CRS-26. Coming up in just about 10 seconds, we should hear... Stage conf 1 entry burn startup. And there's that stage confirmation one of stage the Stage 1 entry burn on our Falcon 9 first stage. Stage one entry burn shutdown. And there's confirmation of completion of the stage one entry burn for our Falcon 9 booster, which is on the left-hand side of your screen. Now, reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical... Nominal trajectory. And there's that call-out of nominal trajectory. Reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical scientific research. And the Falcon 9 first stage that is supporting today's mission performed this entry burn for its 12th time. The Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level, and these achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust each during ascent and descent. And at liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage has thrust greater than five 747 airplanes at full power. Now on the second stage, the one MVAC engine with a much wider nozzle is optimized to 220,500. Second stage in terminal guidance. Good call out there. The MVAC engine. Stage one transonic. And there's a call out that stage one is transonic. Coming up in just about 20 seconds, we should hear confirmation of landing burn for the Falcon 9 first stage. Stage 2 FTS is saved. Apex shut down. Stage 1 landing burn. And then we heard two callouts for MVAC shutdown and landing burn start on our Falcon 9 first stage. Parking orbit. Landing leg deploy. And there we had amazing views of our Falcon 9 first stage. Stage one landing confirmed. As it landed on our drone ship, just read the instructions in the Atlantic Ocean. This landing marks SpaceX's 289th recovery of an orbital class rocket, including first stage landings for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. We also heard confirmation of nominal orbital insertion. Now we still have one more burn of our second stage engine before we're ready to deploy Eutelsat 36D today. 